Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. And today's daily Bible readings, hold on a second, I got it all covered up here, uh, come to us from Psalm 139, 13 through 18, Genesis 33, 1 through 17, Galatians 4, 21 uh, through chapter 5, verse 1. And then uh, you could have also read Psalm 75, or Zephaniah 3, 1 through 13. I'm actually going to focus on Zephaniah. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, the leaders we've got versus the leaders we need, but it has to do it's with what Zephaniah is talking about. Because um, Zephaniah is calling out uh, on behalf of God for basically a change of leadership among the people, specifically um, the people of the city, right? And he talks about the kind of leaders that they have right then. Um, and so God's crying out against the officials, right? He says officials and priests and judges and prophets who are basically, um, they're basically greedy, shameless, profane, and oppressive people, right? That's what, that's what Zephaniah is calling them out about. And that's in uh, Zephaniah 3.3. 3. And actually this passage today is kind of in two parts because God's talking about this is what the people are like. This is what your officials and your priests um, and your prophets are and your judges are all like. Which consequently, if that's the way the leadership is, if that's the way all those people are, then the people must not be much farther behind, it, you know leadership kind of reflects on the lead on the people and the people kind of reflect on the leadership um and then it, the second half is where god talks about what he's going to do instead he's going to talk about the kind of people he needs in that city the kind of people he wants to see in that city and the kind of people he is going to put into place in that city and so zephaniah 3 11 through 12 you've got god promising that he will remove the haughty and exultant ones replacing them with a remnant who are humble and lowly and i i'm paraphrasing i'm not reading the text directly but y'all are big kids you can do that um and the point of this being is that God really doesn't like to have to work with leaders and officials, you know, priests, prophets, judges, uh, who are, like we said earlier, greedy, shameless, profane, and oppressive. Uh, he doesn't want to work with them, it would seem, according to Zephaniah, and he will go to great lengths to remove them um, from their positions and replace them with the people that he likes and he will work with even to the point in here in Zephaniah talking about bringing people in from outside um, bringing in a remnant he says uh, excuse me I gotta find it um, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia my suppl suppliants my scattered ones shall bring my offering on that day you shall not be put to shame because of all the deeds which by which you have rebelled against me for then i will remove from your uh, from your midst your proudly exultant ones and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain um for i will uh for i will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly they shall seek refuge in the name of the lord a remnant of israel they shall do no wrong and utter no lies nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths they will pasture and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. And so those are the kind of people that God wants in his midst. Those are the kind of people that God wants uh, in his city, and those are the people he desires to work with, the people that he wants to be in charge. Um, it's, you know, it's this arrogance and haughtiness that God finds so distasteful because um, that belies the fact that you're not really interested in God or what God wants, and you're not interested in what God wants for you and for your neighbor. You're just interested in what you can get out of it for yourself. Um, when I, when you go to like Wesley's sermons and you look up this a keyword like um, humility as it, it would apply to this, right? Because God w wants humble people that he can work with. Um, there's uh, one of Wesley's sermons, which is has this interesting title of On Zeal, which is not really anything people talk about very much anymore or preach on. You very rarely hear people talk about somebody being zealous. 
And if they do say that, they kind of probably mean it in a bad way. And Wesley points at that, because Wesley wrote this sermon in... Oh, I don't have the date there, but uh, sometime in the 1700s. Um, and he talks about this, that very fact. He's like, you know, I've found one sermon in the past 100 years, and it was 100 years ago that somebody preached on zeal and, like, Christians being zealous. And then he talks about, you know, there's a, a problem with it. Um, uh, and there's a reason why we don't talk about it much, because it has this really bad negative connotation. He actually uh, is writing this sermon and talking about this at a time of great change in his own country, in the, the nation of England and in the world. Um, and he says, uh, it, talking about the cost of arrogant zeal at this time of great change in his country, he says, insomuch that it may be truly said, pride, covetousness, ambition, revenge, have in all parts of the world slain their thousands, but zeal its ten thousands. And so he's talking about the, this zeal that's really founded on, you know, your self-centeredness. Um, you know, you, you think... You, it, you think and act like you're really zealous for some bigger idea, but at the end of the day, you're really just about it for you. He said that's really what costs people. That's what, you know, it's the covetousness, the ambition, the revenge, um, and this zeal that really costs people their lives. It doesn't just make things bad for everybody. It costs people their lives. And so what Wesley then calls for is, is a, the true Christian zeal, as he puts it, which is rooted in love of God and neighbor and not rooted in this, you know, selfish love. It's not, you know, it's different from saying, you know, I have a love, a love for myself and, you know, the, rooted in the idea that God loves me and cares for me and wants the best for me. It's love of myself at the cost of all else and all others. Um, and he talks about how humble leaders have their eyes fixed on love. You know, the people that would really want to do the will of God and, and follow God and, and do what God is trying to do in the world, they have their eyes fixed on love. And, and another quote from the sermon, he says, Now one of the chief properties of love is humility. Love is not puffed up. Accordingly, it is, um, it is a appropriately... Oh, excuse me. It is a property of true zeal. I'm trying to read my own handwriting. A property of true zeal. Such is the degree of humility. They must rise and fall together. So zeal and zeal, real true Christian zeal is tied up in real true love of God and love of neighbor. And that means humility. Um, it is, they must rise and fall together. He says, the same love which fills a man with zeal for God makes him little and poor and vile in his own eyes. And so he's saying that, you know, the kind of zealous leaders that we need, the kind of zealous people who will really take up the cause and really push it forward are the people who who really truly are zealous for God and they love God so much that they realize they're not the center of the universe and that, you know, other people live in this universe too and that God loves them too and so if they are going to say they love God they have to love their neighbor um, whether or not that neighbor you know votes the party line or you know whatever <laughs> you want to say the allegiance is to God and therefore to neighbor for the sake of loving God it's that's the kind of zeal that he's talking about and those according to Zephaniah, are the leaders we need. Uh, unfortunately, they may not be the leaders we want, but according to God, they're the leaders we need. That's the DBR for today, and we will be back tomorrow. Have a good afternoon and a good evening. Boop.